Former President Trump's legal team facing a 5 p.m. deadline today to respond to the DOJ's push to limit what they can publicly share about the election interference case. Our next guest says the public has a right to hear every side. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett joins us right now. Greg, good morning to you. Good morning, Steve. Okay, so can you understand why the uh, government is asking that uh, the Donald Trump team not release a bunch of stuff that's not public? No, no, not at all. Uh, it, it surprises me, this notion that Trump's social media post is somehow threatening witnesses. I think you have to do some mental gymnastics to see it that way. There's no mention of witnesses in Trump's post. It is instead, it seems to me, a broad political reaction to what Trump sees as a politically driven prosecution and then subsequent attacks by his political opponents. The response, though, by the special counsel, Jack Smith, that this somehow merits a protective order uh, telling Trump you can't talk about the issues in the case, you can't disclose evidence in discovery. I mean, that's a violation, it seems to me, of the First Amendment rights to speak freely, to defend yourself. It's okay for Smith to publicly condemn Trump in an indictment and then appear in a splashy news conference and double down on that but the accused can't respond in kind? That doesn't seem terribly fair, does it? Yeah, and the public does have the right to know. We want to know all the details. That's right. I mean, how would you feel, God forbid, if you're a defendant uh, and suddenly you're muzzled as prosecutors you know, convict you in the court of public opinion over charges you believe are unfounded? But, you know, I must say this is consistent with how Jack Smith tends to operate. He doesn't want the public or the press to hear or see any exculpatory evidence, only what he thinks is incriminating. And look, there's nothing classified or sensitive in the January 6th case. The public has a right to hear both sides. So, Greg, okay, we'll wait five o'clock. We'll see what, uh, what the Trump team comes up with to try to be able to get the freedom of speech, and the press should all be hoping that Trump's successful. This is where we get more information yeah. uh, and put in the mainstream. But the president wants two things, especially. He wants to change a venue, and he wants a new judge. What are the chances of that, knowing the judge has to decide if she should be recused? Yeah, I, it, I think it's a zero mm -hmm. chance. Right. Mm -hmm. In earlier cases related to January 6th, this judge said, sorry, no change of venue. I don't care uh, that, you know, the, the venue has the jury pool that is predominantly against Republicans and, and Donald Trump. Irrelevant. Um, and the judge is not going to recuse herself. Uh, it's, a, it's a rarity when a judge does. So I think th those motions will be made, um, but they'll be denied. I think the important motion is a motion to dismiss that this case uh, is simply not supported by the law. In particular, right. the Supreme Court decision in the seminal case of U.S. versus Alvarez, the Supreme Court said false claims by politicians are protected speech mm -hmm. under the First Amendment, the same way that hate speech, which we don't like, is protected. The proper remedy is not criminalizing it, but the counter speech document. Uh, doctrine. You counter false claims and lies with the truth. Well, let's see what happens. Five o'clock's the deadline. Greg uh, Jarrett, author of Trial of the Century, talking about what certainly will be the trial of the century. Sir, thank you very much for joining us live. <laughs> thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.